Hey everyone, so I actually just brought in my Tesla to a service center, not anything really serious, just the rear window on the driver's side is a bit misaligned, and they said they would cover it for free, so I figured, hey, why not? But of course, I'm pretty far from the Tesla service center because I live in a fairly rural area, and I didn't want to have to drive our gas car to and back because they said it's probably not going to be ready until tomorrow. So they actually offered me a loaner, which they said is pretty rare, so it looks like today I'm going to be driving a long range rear wheel drive model 3 this is actually one of the vehicles that we really wanted to get and we wish tesla still made but they don't make anymore so it's not a dual motor but it does come with premium connectivity it does have full self-driving and i'm not entirely sure of the year it's kind of hard to tell in the settings app here it is still on an intel based infotainment processor and it does still have the chrome trim so it's probably a 2019 or 2018 but we're at 96 percent and it's offering 288 miles of range, which is kind of cool. It's an all blacked out interior. You can definitely tell by the dated center console and the steering wheel has these extra ridges on the edge, which is kind of cool. But yeah, it is still a lead acid, uh, low voltage battery type. Doesn't say the year in here, which is also interesting. It's a resistive cabin heater. So I think that means there's no heat pump, but it does come with supercharging that I don't have to pay for. So that's kind of nice. We kind of get to try out an older Model 3 for the day. It's not not terribly different other than of course the the black interior has some slight tweaks to the overall look of the inside but hey they give you a model 3 key fob which i've never used before i bet it doesn't have a powered trunk though which is probably the only thing i would want to use the key fob for anyway but yeah i'm just gonna drive it see how it handles see how it feels and not have to worry about my safety score anymore so i'll still drive safe don't worry but just a little bit harsher on the turns maybe no i won't also these are no longer magnetic on the older design they're kind of like traditional sun visor clips everything feels just a little bit older also you can tell the scroll wheels are more rubberized than before but hey i'm curious what kind of energy we can get oh we'll find out i guess shortly so about 24 to 48 hours with the uh, long range rear wheel drive model 3 this should be fun so i've driven this older model 3 based on the owner's manual i'm pretty sure it's a 2018 model but either way it has a lot in common with my new model 3 and a lot of differences and i know not too many of you were probably asking me to compare a 2018 long range rear wheel drive to a 2022 model 3 rear wheel drive standard range but I had the opportunity to compare the two back to back based on me driving my own Model 3 this morning and now driving this around town and actually running quite a bit of groceries. We put a lot of stuff in the frunk. So I have some updated thoughts on things Tesla has changed over the years. And for one, I think I can actually tell a little bit of the difference between the partial premium sound system and the premium sound system. This is supposed to have more immersive audio. So a bit more of the speakers are activated and listening to a lot of music on the drive home, I do think I'm hearing a bit more lower frequencies. Again, I don't think by any stretch that the partial premium interior sounds bad. It's still a very solid sound system. There's just some very, very intense, very low frequencies that I'm picking up in this car that I don't think I normally hear in my car. Also, I'm noticing a lot more interior lighting on this vehicle as well, which I do think is part of the premium interior. You're getting more lights down by where your feet are, and that's not a particular area I need to see all that clearly but i do notice it and in certain lighting i would say that the piano black center console can look kind of slick and cool but especially whenever the sun hits it it just looks so fingerprinty and scratchy and i'm glad we don't have this design in our car but i could see the appeal you know in a showroom in the shade actually you don't really pick up as many fingerprints and scratches and you know just filling you in on what my wife thought when she sat in this car and we drove it around she was like yeah that, that piano black looks kind of nice. Again, I don't think I would take it over our current vehicle, but it wasn't as bad as I remember it being when I test drove other Teslas in the past. But yeah, as far as the door design goes, not much has changed. I mean, the buttons are definitely more piano black and glossy, and they just have a little line when you have to push them to open the door, whereas we have a little door open icon on ours. And also, while the black interior is kind of refreshing when you're so used to white all the time, I feel like the black interior 
interior is it's not bad by any means it's fine it gets the job done it's functional and i mean honestly it's cheaper which is why most of you should probably go with the black interior but i don't know when i got inside it and started driving it around i just felt like so many of my friends and family members that have bought new cars have all pretty much had these black interiors i feel like that's just kind of the industry standard and that just makes the interior to me feel a little bit basic maybe that's just because i don't know of that many other new vehicles on the market that have a white interior as purely clean white as the tesla does so to me that just makes our model 3 feel a lot more special a lot more unique because i'm just not used to seeing cars with that color interior and after owning it now for nearly a month i can say it's not a big dirt magnet it's very easy to clean and frankly even with me getting in the car with sweat and mud after a bike ride or something i still don't notice the seats picking up that much dirt or smudges it's the black plastic on the bottom parts of the car that pick up the most amount of dirt not the white seats which i love the look of and i'm still glad we got them but these are not bad at all still very comfortable feels like a very similar material and i think that they honestly don't probably show dirt as easily as the white interior but they do show oil smudges and fingerprints that could be a little bit sweaty and that kind of thing i feel like sure while dirt may not show up as easily other things show up more noticeably as well so you kind of win some you lose some depending on which interior you get but if you're on the fence about it i'm just gonna say go black there's nothing wrong with this interior and if the white interior wouldn't have accelerated our delivery of the model 3 i probably would be less inclined to have upgraded for it i just knew that the white interior teslas were getting accelerated in the delivery process so that was a big motivating factor for me to get white and also yes i do think it looks quite nice and after driving my car for the past few weeks and now switching to a 2018 model i definitely notice a big change in materials on the steering wheel so at first glance you probably just notice there's a few extra ridges on the top but the legitimate texture they chose is a lot more smooth and it kind of just gracefully slides through your hands compared to the new steering wheel material which is a lot more grippy i think it looks a lot more minimal to not have those extra lines but i think i prefer and this could be owner's bias just the fact that it's not my car makes me not like it as much but i think i personally prefer the newer model 3 steering wheel material because it just feels like the wheel's not going to slide away from you and you don't have to apply so much pressure to the wheel in order to get it to stay on course or essentially let the car know that you're still paying attention when you're on autopilot this i could understand some people liking you know it feels a bit more like a leather material instead of a plastic you know somewhat composite i mean i know it's all vegan leather but i can kind of understand now after driving it around why some people may actually prefer the old steering wheel design because it just feels awfully slick and much smoother than the new one and it all comes down to personal taste i could definitely see myself getting used to it and i don't know if it's just because this car is old or if tesla changed something maybe some of you guys out there know more about this than i do but to me the steering feels a lot looser and i don't necessarily mean that in a bad way but when turning it feels like it doesn't require as much pressure or as much torque in order to get the car pointed in the direction you want it to go i don't know if that's something that just gets loose over time and because this car has like 40,000 miles on it you notice it more than my car which only has 2,000 miles on it but i made sure that i had my steering settings in the exact same configuration i have both of them on comfort so i know it's not just a difference in steering mode but on that same subject i've known for a long time that when teslas are at a high state of charge say like 100 percent then the regenerative braking is typically limited you don't come down to a stop as quickly as you would if you were at say 80 percent but i noticed that even when i charge my model 3 to 100 percent which i do pretty frequently because it's iron based i felt like the regen was exactly the same and i had heard people say that a long time that the regen is limited at high states of charge but i was not noticing it at all on our car but when i picked up the loaner it was at around 96 percent it was a pretty high state of charge and i saw the little gray dots on the regen slash power output bar at the top of the screen and it was limited and i could tell because first time i started driving the car and the first time my foot came off the accelerator the car just kind of kept rolling i mean not as much as our old sonata did but definitely not as much regen strength as i was used to which i thought was interesting so i guess maybe the limited regen might just apply to nickel based batteries and maybe it's not as big a deal with iron based batteries i'm not sure but just a little detail that i wanted to highlight and by far one of the things i've missed the most by not having my own car has to be the powered trunk you know that's something we've all kind of taken 
taken for granted now because most people are buying Model Ys, which have the powered lift gate, and Model S's and X's have pretty much always had them. Model 3's have had them for a few years now, but this is the first Model 3 in a long time that I've tried that doesn't actually open the trunk automatically and close it. And I'll admit that, you know, it's pretty spring-loaded, so opening the trunk is fairly easy, but the amount of pressure you have to apply to close the trunk, oh, it annoyed me, like, instantly. And like I said, we were running errands and picking stuff up and driving around town a lot, and we were using the trunk a bit more frequently than usual, and I immediately noticed, like, man, I have to apply quite a bit of pressure to this car in order to get it to close, which is kind of the opposite of our broken trunk on the Hyundai Sonata, you know, the car we had before the Tesla for, like, six years. That one is very heavy, very hard to open up, but it has a lot of weight on the way down, so it's very simple, very easy to close. You barely have to apply any pressure to the trunk, and it'll slam shut, whereas this car is kind of the opposite, which is just not what I'm used to at all when it comes to sedan trunks. The fact that you have to uh, slam it down as hard as you can, and I'm very, very grateful we waited to get a Tesla that actually had the powered trunk, because that is just such a quality of life feature that makes a big difference on daily usage. However, one thing that I will give credit to this car for, the frunk is way, way bigger. So while we were running errands, we were actually putting a lot of groceries and a lot of stuff in the frunk, because it's way bigger on the 2018 Model 3 compared to the 2022 model. Sure, I try to use the frunk whenever I can on my car, but if I had a frunk as big as this Model 3's, I would definitely be using it more, and it even has the little bag hooks that you can strap bags to, which is kind of cool. I didn't know that there was such a massive difference in the frunk size. I knew they were tweaking it a little bit in future generations of the Model 3, but now seeing it back to back, it's quite noticeably larger on this model. I think that's likely because this vehicle has a resistive cabin heater, and our Tesla has a heat pump, which is more efficient, but probably takes up more space in the front. And I know some people disagree with me on this, and I've heard otherwise, so I apologize if I sound like a noob for saying this, but even though that the cabin heater is resistive, which is less efficient, when we got in this car, and because I don't have it paired to my phone, it's just a loaner vehicle, we weren't able to pre-cool the cabin like we normally do, but we just got in this car, which was parked in a parking lot in the sun while we were inside picking up errands, and we turned on the HVAC, it felt like it just got really, really cold very quickly. Maybe that's anecdotal evidence, maybe it's just because the weather is just a little bit cooler than usual, but to me, it feels like the resistive HVAC system is able to cool down the car a lot faster than the heat pump is. And I'm not saying that's necessarily better. I think if you had to make the decision between cooling the car faster and cooling the car more efficiently, the efficient choice is the smarter one. I would rather have the range and the battery pack be preserved than just hope that the car cools down faster. And honestly, we're normally able to know when we're coming up to our car and pre-cool it, so it's not that big a deal, but it just felt like ice cold within seconds of turning it on. I don't know exactly if that has something to do with the heat pump, but it's just a slight observational thing. I also felt like the backup cameras when I reversed the vehicle felt a little bit sharper. As far as I'm aware, though, Tesla has not changed the cameras over the years, so I have a theory that maybe because of the chip shortage, Tesla may have changed out the video processing chips, and maybe it just looks a tad more blurry on my car, or maybe it's just as simple as I haven't wiped down the cameras on my Model 3 ever, and maybe the cameras on this vehicle have been wiped down. It may have something to do with the screen protector, because our car has a matte screen protector, this one has a glossy one, so maybe that impacts the sharpness of the backup cameras, but I don't know if this has to do with the Intel Atom processor. Whenever I go into reverse on this vehicle, it takes a couple seconds for the side repeater cameras to show up on the screen, whereas on our car, they show up immediately, instantly. There's no lag. This car feels just a little bit delayed when it comes to bringing up those cameras. But I also can say that I do somewhat notice the higher range. We've driven it quite a bit, you know, all the way back from the repair center and driving it around town, visiting grandparents, picking up stuff, and we're still only sitting at 80%, which is not too bad considering we didn't even start at 100%, and I definitely feel like if I was driving my car, I would probably be around 70% or so by now. So it's not like there's gigantic use cases that open up by owning a long-range vehicle, especially because this one, I can tell based on the energy consumption, is definitely not quite as efficient as my Model 3. It's still very good. Over the last 30 miles, just driving around town and a bit on the freeway, it's averaged 245 watt-hours per mile. Our car, typically, when doing some light highway driving and driving around town, will sit somewhere around 200, maybe 220 if I'm driving aggressively, but last I checked on our current car, watt hours per mile based on the last 30 miles of driving was actually under 200, and I've very rarely been able to get this car 
effort to show anything below 240 so makes sense it's a bigger battery pack and a more dated design more dated hvac system so this car just naturally consumes more energy per mile than mine but it has more energy to pull from but something i've noticed because i like to work in my car as many of you guys can tell is there is substantially way less usb ports in this thing so they've installed the wireless charger here which i actually appreciate because the wireless charger sits a lot lower than the wireless charger in my car which means that when you're sitting at like a natural state in the front seat you can easily see your entire phone display whereas on our car the wireless chargers are mounted a little bit higher and you can't see the entire screen on your phone when it's sitting there charging but the difference is this one i'm pretty sure was not installed on the car by default because when you open up the center console you can see it's plugged into the two usb ports down here which i'm guessing because they're usb are not very high wattage and yes there's two usb ports in the back as well but that's about it there's no usb port in the glove box for sentry mode and they do have this little center console holder thing for change or whatever you want to put in there but no extra usb ports in here like there is in my car and on top of that another big strike for me none of the ports are usb c which was not that common of a port back when this car came out but it did still technically exist and i remember the first time i got in a tesla i saw there's a lot of usb a ports in this thing and usb c is the future but shortly after i noticed that tesla started switching to type c in their cars and i'm very grateful that we have lots of USB C ports to choose from plus the wireless chargers are built in natively it's not like an aftermarket thing so cup holders are the same size as before so they still don't fit our water bottles nor do the door pockets and everything in here just makes a little bit more noise than our car and that's probably not because of something inherently wrong with it it's probably just because it has a lot of miles on it but just pushing the side of the center consoles makes a bit of crackling sound. I noticed that when I signal, the blinker just makes a little bit more noise, like all of the plastic parts of the steering wheel, you know, make a little bit more crackling than our car does. But I expect our car will probably do that once we put 40,000 miles on it. Build quality, I would like to say has improved since 2018, but it's genuinely hard to tell according to Troy Tesla. There's been an increase in the number of people that have service visits after they take delivery. That could be skewed data just because there's more people taking delivery. But overall, I think my car will probably start to face a lot of the same issues that this one does. But I also noticed on the 2018 Model 3, you got a bit more plastic and rubber protection over the footrest whereas on my current 2022 model 3 there's just carpet there so that's kind of a downgrade they've made over time plus the defroster lines have been redesigned a bit on the back windshield not sure which one you prefer but there is a noticeable difference there one of the biggest ones that they actually warned me about when i picked up the loaner is the driver's side door is like severely broken and absolutely needs to be serviced but because it's a loaner vehicle i guess they just don't care it's very hard for it to close it just naturally wants to not latch whenever you slam it so i felt really bad because the guy who loaned it to me was like yeah on the driver's side door you just gotta slam it as hard as you can and there's been many times where i've slammed it pretty hard and it still doesn't latch the door still doesn't close so you just have to make sure that the door handle sits flush against the side of the door before you start slamming it but there's a lot of times where that door handle sticks outward and stays outward and it's kind of hard to notice that when you're first getting into the car so you'll just keep slamming over and over again and, and it won't close which is kind of annoying but it's better than having no car at all which is what happened on my last service visit they gave me uber credits telling me that hey you can just drive this around while your car's in service but there's no uber where i live because again i live in a pretty rural area so this was their compromise for me to not have access to uber and they basically just asked me to charge it up before i bring it back which i will because supercharging is free in this car so i'm taking advantage of that no i'm not plugging it into the home charger i'm taking advantage of this battery pack right now and he just asked that we don't bring pets in the car or smoke in the car which is a bummer because i love smoking weed with my dog but i just realized that i guess we aren't going to be able to do that in this loaner i'm kidding by the way i don't own a dog and i don't smoke anything i don't even drink coffee that's how vanilla of a guy i am but hey that's why i miss my white on white car because that's our real vehicle and that's got the iron based batteries and that's got the ports and that's got the powered trunk i want but overall it's always just kind of fun to check out loaner vehicles was really hoping they had like a model s or 
Razer X for me to try out for a day. That would have been a lot of fun, but this is what they got. I'm not complaining. I'm very happy with the experience, and I think that as Tesla ramps up and hopefully catches up on demand, loaner vehicles could start to become more of the norm for Tesla service. But are there any 2018 Model 3 owners out there? How have they aged for you? What do you want in a new car? What are you going to miss about the 2018 model that Tesla has gotten rid of? Is it passenger lumbar support? Because this car has it, but my car doesn't. All that good stuff. Let me know your thoughts down below. And thank you to everyone on Patreon for supporting this channel directly. Seriously, helps us out a ton, as does just watching these videos. So thanks again. Have an excellent rest of your day.